Hey, what's up everyone? Chris here from Brick Players Union, and in this video I'm going to share with you some mods that I made to the LEGO Creator Expert Palace Cinema Modular Building, set 10232 from 2013. So, let's check it out. Now, normally when I try to come up with mods that I want to make to the exteriors of stock LEGO Modular Buildings, it is a bit of a challenge. They're so well designed and so well built that there really isn't much that I want to change. Now usually I can think of at least a few things to build differently, but in the case of the Palace Cinema, with its brick built palace sign, the ornate center spire, and the terracotta roof, I really couldn't come up with anything that I thought I could improve. Now, I've run into this before with a few other modular buildings, but at a bare minimum, I would at least change the color of the sidewalks from dark gray to light gray. But with the Palace Cinema, I really like how the dark gray tiles outline the stars on the Walk of Fame. Now, I might decide to change this later on, but for now, I like the sidewalk as is, which means I kept the exterior of the Palace Cinema completely stock. Now, as for the interior, well, that's a different story. Now, some people are of the opinion that building out the interiors of LEGO buildings is kind of a waste, especially if the buildings are a part of a LEGO city, because a lot of times, interiors are rarely, if ever, seen. But not everybody displays their buildings in a LEGO city, and believe it or not, some people actually play with their LEGO, so for those people, interiors are just as important as exteriors. So, it's with that in mind that I also like to take the time to design and build interiors to all of my LEGO buildings. So, with that being said, let's take a look at the changes I've made to the interior of the Palace Cinema. When entering the first floor, if you didn't already buy your tickets from the ticket windows outside, you can buy your tickets at the ticket counter on the inside. The original ticket counter is a fairly simple design. It consists of a light gray base with a light blue countertop and has this angled corner here by the entrance. The new ticket counter is white with a black toe kick, and I built it with a studs on side technique using two of these large 1x4x6 curved arch bricks to give it a bit more of a modern feel. And I built the black toe kick with a combination of regular tiles and one of these larger 4x4 curved tiles, which matches up perfectly with the curve of the bricks that I used for the counter itself. And here in front of the counter, I added two stanchions connected by this short gold chain to create two lines for the ticket buyers. Now, after you buy your tickets, you can come on over here to the concession stand to buy some refreshments to enjoy during the movie. The original concession stand is also light gray with a light blue countertop to match the original ticket counter, which to me, again, looks kind of plain. So I built the new concession counter in white to match the ticket counter, and I also added these large clear windows to show you the variety of snacks that are for sale. The snacks themselves are basic 1x2 tiles in a bunch of different colors to represent the different snacks available. Behind the counter is the prep area. The original is, again, light gray with a light blue countertop, and is actually kind of small, which really doesn't give the employees much room to work. There is a soda fountain with two choices, a popcorn machine, and a few snacks underneath, but that's about it. So, I built the new prep area using four of these 2x3x2 cabinets, which not only doubles the size of the area, but also creates a bunch of storage underneath. I also upgraded to a more modern soda fountain with four choices instead of two, and next to the fountain are two stacks of cups. Now, I like the original popcorn machine, so I reused that, and I also added a large butter dispenser, some popcorn boxes, and a napkin dispenser as well. So, after you've bought your tickets and got some refreshments, it's actually time to move upstairs to the theater itself to enjoy the movie. So, let's go upstairs and take a look at the changes that I made to the second floor. Now, when you arrive on the second floor, it's time to take your seat. And as for the seats themselves, they're built using some 1x2 roof bricks for the armrests and these flag pieces for the seat backs. Now, the seats do recline, but the flag pieces are kind of flat, which really doesn't look very comfortable if you ask me. So, I built the new seats using some 2x2x2 two by two by two thirds curved tiles to add a little cushioning to the seat backs. 
I also rebuilt the armrests using some bowed bricks and added some 1x2 jumpers for some cup holders. And I also added some adjustable footrests for even more comfort. Now, here's a view of the new seats and the old seats side by side, which really gives you a look at how much bigger and more comfy the new seats really are. Now, in addition to the seating upgrades, I also added some curtains to block out the exterior light. Now, from the outside, these windows look great, but inside, they just let in too much light, so I added some curtains to solve that problem. I built the curtains themselves using these 1x6 columns to create kind of a ripple effect, and I built them upside down so the square base would look like a valance. Now, since the curtains are built upside down, I had to get kind of creative with how to mount them. First, I replaced one of the stock plates with two of these studs on side brackets. Then, I used these 2x2 two two studs on side plates with the studs facing down, which allowed me to mount the curtains upside down. And finally, I finished off the valance with a bunch of these 1x2x2 two two thirds bow ties. And here we can see with the curtains hung, it blocks out all of the exterior light and keeps the inside of the theater nice and dark. Alright, that's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know by giving me a thumbs up. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do. That's always greatly appreciated. And if you have a minute before you go, please leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Not only of the changes that I've made, but also let me know if you have any ideas or suggestions for some other changes I can make, not only to the inside, but also to the outside. I'd also like to give a shout out to Elvira Mejia, Doglover33, Josh Films, and Fody. And on that note, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.